everybody. My, uh, my name is Romina Juricon. I'm the Senior Field Application Scientist at Therapeutics, a leading biotech company that develops and commercializes novel single cell analysis systems. I have more than 14 years of experience in scientific research with a strong background in mitochondrial biology, cellular metabolisms, and rare diseases. In my current role, I support the development and sales of SphereFluidics products, providing technical assistance and training to our customers. But also, I collaborate with internal and external partners on innovative uh, scientific projects. I'm passionate about translating scientific discoveries into practical solutions that can improve human health and well-being. Uh, during my scientific research, I published multiple papers in peer-reviewed journals and discovered the ketone bodies-based treatment for the rare syndrome called the WHS syndrome. And I also won several awards and honors for my work. Today is a pleasure for me to be here on behalf of Sphere Fluidics and be part of this annual, seventh annual drug discovery and development virtual event. The title of my presentation is Pico Droplets Enabling High Throughput Single Cell Isolation and Screening. The talk is about single cell analysis, why it is important. I will give also an overview of the current techniques used for single cell analysis with a particular emphasis on Pico Droplet based microfluidics. And finally, I will also have a couple of examples of, of how pico droplet microfluidics technology has been used to identify genes responsible for antimicrobial resistance at single cell level, and how the technology has been used for CAR T cell therapy applications. A single cell is the basic, basic structural and functional unit of living beings and researchers have long studied life at single cell level because it enables them to understand cellular phenotypes at single cell resolution. A typical adult human body contains 100 trillion, trillion cells across 80 different tissues for a total of 1,264 cell groups. Each one has a distinct and precise functions. However, cellular heterogeneity is intrinsic to the nature of individual cells because they are caused by genetic mutations or microenvironment and variations. Therefore, single cell analysis is an extremely powerful tool that aims to address intercellular heterogeneity in the genome, epigenome, transcriptome, proteome, and metabolome, to name a few, to interrogate the complex life activities in organisms to explain physiological and pathological mechanisms, and also to discover novel therapeutic interventions. Now let's zoom in on single cells. Each cell, like for example this tissue, contains the same genetic information, but cell type and behavior depend on which genes are expressed. Zooming in on which genes are expressed or switched on in individual cells may help to reveal, for example, the disease state or the first signs of the disease. Conventional bulk analysis measures the average response from a cell population. Although bulk analysis is a powerful tool in biology, it only captures the general state of a population of cells how they respond on average to treatment or changes. But what about the cells that are away from the mean, like for example, rare variants? Bulk analysis often masks the presence of rare or small population of cells in a bulk of, of cells, leading to loss of biological information. On the opposite side, single cell analysis could unveil the heterogeneity of a cell population and gain unique insight into complex biological processes. In the last few years, thanks to, thanks to several technological improvements in the single cell multiomics field, single cell analysis enables complex interrogation into a cell sample, reducing biological noise without missing important information.
Before initiating a single cell analysis, scientists need to isolate or identify the single cells. Current isolation techniques are classified into two groups based on the principle they use for this isolation. The first group is called passive and is based on physical cellular properties like, for example, size, density, ele electric changes and deformability. And it includes methods like density gradient centrifugation, membrane filtration and microchip based capture platforms. The main advantage of passive, techni passive techniques is that they are label free. The second group called active is paid instead on cellular biological characteristics, such for example, biological protein expression, and they and includes methods like flow cytometry, magnetic cell sorting, and droplet-based microfluidics. The major advantages of the active techniques is that they are high throughput and they can be automated. Now, single cell ana is isolation. It is the first and critical step for obtaining information from an individual cells. And this must be fast, effective and gentle to maintain the native expression profiles. This slide shows an overview of some of the most common methods used for isolated single cells. For the full list, we recommend some readings at the end of the presentation. For today, we focus on limiting dilution, droplet microfluidics and procytometry. Limiting dilution is a commonly used technique in which pipettes are used to isolate individual cells by dilution. Due to its statistical distribution of cells, this method is not very efficient. Still, limited dilution is considered the most cell-friendly technique, even though it's also known to be labor-intensive and time-consuming. More recently, a flow cytometry, or FAX, which is a specialized type of flow cytometry with sorting capacity, have become the most used strategies for isolating highly purified single cells. Before separation, the cell suspension is made and the target cells are labeled with fluorescent probes that recognize specific antigens on the cell surface of the target cells. And as the single cells uh, runs through the cytometry, each cell is exposed to a laser which allows the detection of the fluorescent signal. The instrument then applies a charge to the droplet containing the single cell, facilitating the collection of the heat into appropriate final collection tubes. Although FAX has been widely used in both basic and applied research, there are some potential limitations with this technique. Firstly, it requires a larger amount of cells, and this is a problem when you have only a small number of cells, like less than, than 10 to 10,000 of cells. Then you always need a specific monoclonal antibodies that recognize the proteins of interest. And most of all, the rapid flow in the machine can damage the cell viability of the sorted cells, which sometimes can also render the isolation a failure. The operative microfluidics technology for single cell isolation has gained popularity over the last decade due to its low sample consumption and low analysis cost. Droplet microfluidics enables precise fluid control for single cell isolation in tiny aqueous droplets or water in oil droplets. The compartmentalization of single cells in these tiny droplets together with the fluorescent tags enables faster reactions, faster reaction than conventional method. And the lower volume required by the system compared to conventional methods enables the manipulation and screening of thousands to millions of cells at reducing cost. I will cover more about the application of droplet microfluidics for single cell analysis in the next few slides. What is it, pico droplet based microfluidics? Pico droplet based microfluidics is a branch of microfluidics a science using immiscible fluids and small channels to encapsulate cells and reagents in tiny droplets with an unprecedented degree of control. 
when discusses pico droplet, we refer to generation of droplets on the picoliter scale. In this video, we show the passive generation of pico droplets in which the solution containing the cells and the assay probes comes in contact from both sides, the top and the bottom, with the biocompatible oil stream. That bioapplying shear forces on the aqueous solution generate water in oil or aqueous droplets. One of the major advantages of this technology is monodispersity which means that the droplets have the same size or volume. This guarantees that all the pico droplets contain the same amount of reagents, enabling reliable and quantitative analysis. In that, because of the miniaturization of the system, reaction times are much faster than conventional methods. We are talking here about minutes versus several days. Pico droplets have been used to encapsulate and grow and screen several cell types from mammalian cells, like for example, here you see hybridomas, primary B cells, which are known to be very sensitive once isolated from the tissue of origin, to microorganisms like E. coli, but even yeast. The technology also enables the co encapsulation of two or more cell types within the same pico droplet for example, for interactional or functional studies. Thanks, thanks to its capacity to manipulate fluids with superior control, Pico Droplet Microfluidics is a powerful platform for single cell analysis. The encapsulation of the single cells in a confined environment creates individual nanolabs that can be handled and manipulated in a variety of ways. Some of the manipulation methods are shown in here and include fusion or merging of droplets in which droplets with chemical or biological payloads can be fused into a preformed droplet or sorting of droplets that can occur, can occur variously for high throughput screening it can be based on various parameters, like for example, size, content, or can be fluorescence based. Splitting or fission of droplets is another strategy that splits up a droplet into either asymmetrical or symmetrical droplets. And this can be done to increase throughput or to enable separate analysis of the same biological payload. Dispensing single or pool droplet is another type of manipulation so you can dispense in a final collection tube or in multi well plates, depending on the downstream, downstream analysis. This type of platform has been implemented in various omics techniques and protocols. And in the next few slides, I will show you an example of how pico droplets have been used to screen billions of bacteria cells for antimicrobial resistance studies. The prevalence of clinically relevant bacterial strains resistant to current antibiotics is increasing. And this has been recognized as a major global health threat. Antibiotic resistance occurs at a rate of one in one billion of bacteria. Therefore, <clears throat> novel methodologies are needed to identify new targets or novel compounds. Water in oil pico droplets represent the best solution for its speed and its ultra high throughput screening. For this purpose, a pico droplet microfluidic platform was developed to screen more than 1 billion bacteria in a label free manner to identify antibiotic resistant strains and novel compounds. Particular work E. coli HS151 cells were used as a mod model for screening antimicrobial resistance. And the figures shows the schematics of the pico droplet based workflow. The first step includes the bacterial encapsulation in pico droplets, collection of the droplets for offline incubation in a shaken incubator, and figure three shows the bacterial growth in droplets. Afterwards, the droplets were sorted in a label free manner for antimicrobial resistance. <clears throat> the first step for the scientist 
was to validate pico droplets as bioreactors for E. coli cells. The graph on the, on the left shows the growth curve of bacteria starting from either one or 100 cells in pico droplets or conventional 3 ml culture, ESGN squared. The results demonstrate that overall, the proliferation of bacterial cells is enhanced in a pico droplet environment compared to 3 ml standard cultures. Since the pico droplets used for this study were made with, bi with a biocompatible surfactant, which exhibits a higher oxygen solubility compared to water, the bacteria in the droplet are exposed to a higher oxygen-rich environment, which enhances, therefore, their microbial growth. On the right, we show the micrograph uh, of droplet occupancy in, for bacteria that were uh, grown, starting from one or 100 cells per pico droplet. Next, to evaluate whether pico droplets can be used to assess the antibiotic inhibition of bacterial growth, the scientists measured bacterial growth in the presence of varying concentration of fusidic acid as an antibiotic. The, result, the results showed that bacterial growth was significantly inhibited in the presence of fusidic acid, both in the pico droplet and in the 3 ml cell culture. And the micrograph on the right shows a mixed population of pico droplets containing the mutant proliferating cells and the parental cells. Interestingly, the mutants were found to grow in a densely packed manner, while the wild type were found to grow with a much smaller and adopt a different morphology. The results indicated that pico droplets are both stable and exhibit a favorable environment for performing high-throughput cell screening studies with antibiotics, and that also they can be used to isolate spontaneously resistant bacterial strain. Here we show the sorting biochip in operation uh, on the pico mine system that was used for the study. Sorting of antimicrobial resistant strain was achieved by a simple light scattering detection method. Overall, a total of 1 billion of cells were encapsulated in nearly 12 million of pico droplets. And at the end of sorting, 34 hits were detected and collected for further analysis. The image on the left shows some of the pico droplets flowing through the sorting biochip and the dark pico droplets are the positive ones that were sorted, collected for further genomic sequencing. The collected droplets were broken to release the bacterial cells, and then with these were plated on other plates in the presence of fusidic acid. 124 antibiotic resistant colonies were observed on the plates, and these were further analyzed by sequencing. This work demonstrates a novel label-free platform for high-throughput screening of antimicrobial-resistant bacteria in pico droplets. The advantages of this approach is that relatively small amount of experiment compounds were required. It allowed the determination of four or frequency of resistance and also the isolation of antimicrobial resistance phenotype for genomic screening. Next, the flexibility of the pico droplet microfluidics technology is such that numerous assay formats can be adapted for pico droplets. One of the unique advantages of the pico droplet technology is the compartmentalization. So, for example, secreted targets can also be assessed, unlike systems such as flow cytometry. At sphere fluidics, we use Forster Resonance Electron Transfer, or FRET, type of assay for detection of secreted targets. Surface targets can also be addressable in formats such as cell binding or fluorescent reporter assay. These assays require the co-encapsulation of two cell types, for example, an antibody secreting cells with the rated out cells expressing the antigen on the surface, 
or an, anti an antibody secreted cells with the readout cells which will express fluorescent protein upon binding of the antibody on the antigen expressed on the surface. Using the same principle, we will demonstrate today how pico dropper technology has been used to screen CAR T cells for cell therapy. Now we introduce the cell therapy studies. Immunotherapy using chimeric antigen receptor T cells, known as CAR T cells, is one of the most advanced and promising adoptive T cells immunotherapy. T cells are autologous, genetically engineered T lymphocytes expressing CAR aside their natural T cell receptors. CARs are fusion proteins combining features of T cells as well as antibodies that recognize antigens present on the surface of targeted tumor cells, leading to the destruction of the killing of the tumor cells. The first step in the CAR T cell therapy is collecting the immunocells from the patient or the donor. The T cells are then separated from other blood components and activated and expanded. After that, the T cells must undergo transduction resulting in the expression of the chimeric antigen receptors on the cell surface. And then the modified T cells are expanded in the bioreactor and after achieving an appropriate volume, they are collected and administered back to the patient. Currently, more than 500 clinical trials are undergoing globally, but the manufacturing costs are still very high. Therefore, there is an enormous high pressure to improve the safety of the therapy, whilst at the same time accelerating the manufacturing process, decreasing the cost which currently can be as high as $300,000 per patient. For clinical grade CAR T cell products, regular quality controls are required before each infusion back to the patient. This figure illustrates a wide range of CAR T cell function related factors that need to be assessed in preclinical evaluations. Upon isolation, RECI-CAR T cells are activated, and upon activation, the activated CAR T cells can proliferate, expand, produce cytotoxic molecules such as granzyme B and perforin and other type of cytokines that eliminate tumor cells. Cytotoxicity or killing activity is always the first line of CAR T cell function evaluation. And today we show a study demonstrated a pico droplet based workflow to test CAR T cytotoxicity, for example, by the production of cytotoxic molecules such as granzyme B and perforin in the presence of the targeted tumor cell. The granzyme B activity functional assay was carried out in pico droplets to assess CAR T cell cytotoxicity in the presence of a targeted tumor cell. The principle behind the functional bioassay include the co encapsulation in pico droplets of an engineered CAR T cell tumor cells along with the commercially available granzyme B substrate peptide. The granzyme B substrate peptide is labeled with a 5 fem fluorophore on one end and with the quencher fluoro from the other end, which is known as QXL520. The model on the left shows that in the absence of interaction between the CAR T cells and the tumor cell, no granzyme B is released by the CAR T cell. And thus, the granzyme B substrate remains intact. In an uncleaved state, no fluorescence is emitted upon excitation of the fluorophore due to the quenching effect of the nearby quencher molecule. The model on the right shows that upon encounter of the CAR T cells with the tumor cells within the same pico droplet, granzyme B is released by the CAR T and it cleaves the granzyme B peptide substrate releasing the quencher. And this results in fluorescent positive signals as an outcome of the cytotoxicity activity carried out by the CAR T cells within the same pico droplet.
Now, the feasibility of carrying out the CAR-T functional assay in pico droplet was first verified in a proof comps studies and biofluorescent imaging. The scientists used an in-house custom-made biochip with two separate equals inlets to keep the CAR-T and the target tumor cells apart until immediate before encapsulation. In the experiment, they used CAR-T cells from a donor expressing a CAR against a prostate-specific membrane antigen that are on the target tumor cells. As a control, they use the same CAR T cells, but they co encapsulate with the controlled tumor cells which were not express the tumor specific antigen. Eco drops were collected in uh, Eppendorf tubes and left them in incubation for either two hours, four hours, or overnight. After this time point, the droplets were collected and, and uh, um, analyzed, uh, analyzed under fluorescent microscope to detect the Gran's MB activity in the droplets. The image showed that pico droplet containing the control shell show very little or just a little amount of fluorescence in the droplet, whereas in the droplets containing the target tumor cells, multiple fluorescent pico droplets are present already at two hours, and these are represented as fluorescent droplets in this image, also four hours. Only after prolonged incubation, 24 hours, is increased fluorescence observed both in the negative and in the experiment, possibly due to unspecific stimulation or glands and be leaking from the dead or apoptotic CAR T cells. The study demonstrated that shorter incubation time are enough to detect the CAR T functionality. So next, having shown that the assay worked, they used these bioassays for the CAR T cell functional assay, but high throughput and the space of a few hours. The figure shows the schematics of the pico droplet based workflow that included the use of the in-house custom-made biochip with the two inlets to keep the CAR T and the target cell apart until before encapsulation. And then the, after the generation of the droplet, the incubation in a fully automated device called Cytomine that enabled the incubation and then the detection of the positive fluorescent droplets for further dispensing to find a multi-well plate. The figure on the left shows the scatter plot of the fluorescent signal detected during the sorting process on the cytomine. You see that the positive hits are selected with the gate, and that shows that about 3% of the total sorted pico droplets result to be positive. The sorting, 5,000 positive, the collected pico droplets were imaged under the mic microscope. On the left, an example of both bright field and fluorescent images of the collected droplets are shown. The fluorescent and non fluorescent pico droplets were counted, and the fluorescent pico droplets population was determined to be 85% post sorting, which is an enrichment of about 28 fold. The results shown in this study demonstrate that pico droplet based functional CAR T study enables CAR T cytotoxicity assessment at a single cell resolution at high throughput and in a matter of a few hours. The isolation of functional CAR T cells, and most importantly, a 28-fold enrichment on functional CAR T cells while discarding the non-functional ones. Thus, this method really represents a valid tool for the screening of CAR T functional cell evaluation. I want to thank you all of you for your attention. Happy to take any questions and also want to show you that there is a slide with all the resources used for this presentation. Thank you very much for your listening.